Hello and good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the Speed Japan Air 3XL channel, and welcome to another episode of my Formula One, my team j career mode, and this is episode number six uh, in season one of my, my team j career mode, and we're at the La Casquette Paul Richard circuit in the French Grand Prix. If you missed the previous one, which was the Canadian Grand Prix, be sure to check it out on youtube.com slash speedjapanator3xl for replay coverages, and check my live coverages on Facebook Live and on uh, twitch.tv slash vjvnerd3xl. Leave your links and comments and likes and subscribe button down below for my purple heart on twitch.tv and then the red bell and click on youtube.com slash vjvnerd3xl channel. And then check Facebook Live for my homepage or news feed to see live coverage of all of my uh, Formula One uh, My Team JPO uh, career modes and all season long. And I was so happy in the previous race in the Canadian Grand Prix that uh, we did win our first race of the season, like uh, last year that we uh, won the um, uh, won the Dutch Grand Prix and everything. I'm a little late uh, doing this uh, career mode and everything, so let's hope we can get this episode um, a little bit quicker and simple and everything, and then hopefully I don't fall asleep. But. Uh, But I waited a little bit late to do this, but I wanted to do it tonight so I can catch up with the other guys and, because they're doing their social gaming too and they're almost to the halfway point of the season. And all of them, they have been struggling a little bit, but uh, I've been doing a good job. I've been the highest uh, in the point standings than any other and uh, Eric is second and then uh, MXM is third and then I'm... Um, well, I'm the highest uh, so far, and, and I already won the race this season, so finally this season I become the first person to win, because last year the female uh, Maxim MXM uh, got the, her first win, and now I got my first win this season, but it's already been accomplished and everything. And we have been doing very well in uh, practice here in the French Grand Prix. We were only P6 in the medium tire setup. And then we moved it up a notch in this practice session number two with the soft tires, running a minute 31 times. We should be able to run a minute and 30 or earlier than a minute 31, but let's hope we can get a good position because we are going to face that grid penalty. At least it's a five-place grid penalty because we only changed the, uh, the gearbox because that gearbox was not going to make it at, in high speeds here at the French Grand Prix. But it's a little more uh, challenging than it is uh, because uh, now you have to back out of the throttle and hit the brakes a little bit. So it is a little tricky uh, to, to, to run around this uh, La Casket circuit, but it's still fast and it's still exhilarating. And then back to session number three, we were still uh, fourth fastest. But let's see if we can try to stay into the top five. We want to keep around in the top ten, uh, but let's hope uh, how the others are going to face uh, their grid penalty. But... Um, but we're going to see how it goes uh, during the race and see what position are we going to be. If we start in pole position, we know we're going to start in the top five. So here we go. Getting set to qualify for the Formula One, my team j career mode. Here is the La Casquette uh, Paul Richard circuit in the Emirates France Grand Prix. And we're back to our original library that we haven't used since the Bahrain Grand Prix, so we expected to, to race with this one and then come back to it. I know everybody's going to get a minute and 30. Yep, and it's Valtteri Botez and Mercedes looking very hot so far. Oh, whoa, and look at the... Look at the time right now for the uh, for Lando Norris and everybody else. He gets a minute and thirty. Track is pretty quiet at the moment. Perhaps we should get out there and get a few laps in. And the weather is going to be clear. There's no rain in sight uh, for qualifying and for the race.
This is a little, a little bit more challenging of a full 120 121 game. Now we have to back out of throttles in some of the corners in here, so it's, it's a bit more challenging than it was last season. And, this, and the good thing about this track, it is very wide. These last two races, we were running on street circuits. Remember, the time is a minute and 30. Let's see if we can try to get it. No, it's a little bit too slow. Well, it's P9. We just didn't get the speed that we needed. Man, if we had that ERS, that, that would have been good. But everybody's going to take a second lap here. Let's we'll see where it's going to put us. Well, it still puts us in P9. Yep, it still puts us in P9. It's a minute and 31, but, uh, but that five-place split penalty is going to drop us into P14. We need to get it a little bit more faster because everybody in the top five is running a minute and 30, and we're still running a minute and 31, 0.280. But let's see if we can try to kick it up a notch. We're only about six car lengths slower, but we just don't have the pace yet for the McLaren and the Mercedes and Red Bulls. Red Bulls are starting to run out of steam a little bit, but, um, but we still uh, we need to get it a little bit quicker. Well, here's the second qualifying session. If we can try to get a little bit more quicker, then it would be good for the third qualifying round. But our qualifying is improving a little bit, but the still, you know, we still got a lot of developments that, that we need to make up. Just running just a little bit of a tad slow right now.
Well, it's a little quicker. It's a minute 31.298, but still not uh, fast enough. a little bit of time going off of that turn. I think we uh, hit that bump a little bit too hard. I've hidden too many apexes over there. Yeah, I just hit too much of the apex and then I gotta stop hitting them. We're still under P9, but uh, we may be in jeopardy of uh, not qualifying in the th third qualifying spot. Well, everybody still stands still, so we did make it into the third qualifying session. But Valtteri Botez got the fastest with a minute and 30, but we're serving car lanes slower. We're, we're almost getting to a minute and 30. But let's see about what happens in the third qualifying session. Well, Gasly got to beat his teammate out there, Sipto Sonoda. So he made it into uh, to P9. Uh, the show wasn't even close. <laughs> But it's going to drop us into P14, but we need to get a faster qualifying here. Let's see if we can do this in one good lap. We get a minute and 30, then uh, we'll be good. Man, Boltes, look at that. He's almost a minute and 29 seconds. And Mercedes is pretty quick. Moves up to the P8. Damn it, come on.
Well, a minute 31.016. We're almost got a minute and 30, but maybe next season it might happen. But it looks like we're going to start on P14. We still can't. Uh, we're almost getting a minute and 30, but uh, we're going to have to wait next season because we need more upgrades on, on the components. So it's going to put us into P13 with that grid penalty. Well, let's see if everybody else is going to be facing grid penalties. But the, look at this. Seven drivers have taken the, uh, a minute and 30s. Look at that. And we were one second off the pace, and then uh, Charles Leclerc did a good job. But I did a great job. I got P8, but uh, man, Boltes is just absolutely, he's got a, a, a solid race car. He could be able to win this race because look at that, a minute 29.685. And he was the fastest. The fans really seem to enjoy that. It means it looks easy. How is your grid penalty going to affect your strategy going into the race? Uh, not, well, it's not going to be uh, as hard, but, uh, you know, if we get stuck in traffic, it's going to make it uh, a lot harder. Are you happy with where you'll be on the grid tomorrow? Well, I'm sorry to be this far up and everything, but let's see what happens in the grid penalty. If anybody else takes it, then uh, we'll see how it goes for them. appreciate your time. Couldn't believe I got an interview for, out of all that. Well, at least we beat a Fernando Alonso in the rivalry breakdown. So it puts us into 20 points right now, up 20 points to 12, and we should be able to beat him. And we made it up to number 9, so we're one more away of getting number 10, and we're going to make a, a boatload of money coming up. So we'll be able to get that third sponsorship uh, uh, sooner or later. And we cannot wait for that. We're already up to nine on the Acclaim. Well, the Acclaim boys are going, moving up and everything, and then everything is looking good. Well, we had to face a grid penalty, but um, we have a new gearbox in there, but uh, let's see how it goes. So we're going to be starting in P13 with that grid penalty. So, unfortunately, we picked up some grid penalties and we'll be starting further back than you expect. As for how bad it is, that will depend on what the other drivers get. Well, let's see if we could start in P13 or maybe uh, somewhere up there because if anybody else is going to be facing grid penalties here and uh, because we did change the gearbox and everything else and it uh, only gave us a high place uh, grid penalty. We're going to have to have another grid penalty for another race, but uh, we'll, that will be uh, later on in the season. Well, once we have these upgrades and everything, this car is going to be solid, it's going to be bulletproof. And we didn't waste as much on the engine that we did uh, before. We, we wasted about 7%, but now it's down to about 5%. And then when we get that turbocharger uh, for that race, then uh, it's going to look uh, mighty good. So here we go. Let's get ready for episode number six for our Formula One My Team J4 career mode. See if we can try to uh, improve a good finish here. We already have two podium finishes in a row. Got a third in uh, Bahrain. I mean, got a third in uh, in Baku, and then a winning the race in Canada with the rainy strategy. And everything is looking uh, positively good, in good shape. But um, if we get those components, then we're going to be around the Alpine and Alphataris. And then we might be a tick faster road with the Mercedes and everything else, but let's just keep the R&Ds going and everything because we got a lot more coming up. Let's have a major upgrade with that suspension arm. Let's hope we can get that. But uh, a lot of good things coming up uh, with this car. So here we go. Getting set for the race here, and it's going to be a safe, clean race in the uh, La Casquet circuit in the Paul Richard. Here is the French Grand Prix. So let's see what that bridge penalty is gonna uh, take us. Now that the Tour of the France is over, 
Now it's time for uh, racing on steroids, Formula One. To the art of motor racing back in the late 1800s. We've come a long way since then, and you're about to find out how far. It's time for the French Grand Prix, the circuit glory car then, a 3.6 mile track, 25 miles east of Marseille. 15 corners here, 6 to the left and 9 to the right, with the main overtaking chance expected going into turn 8. Top speeds today should be around 205 miles per hour. And everybody else getting ready as well, too. With the race minutes and here's the starting center, grid. Here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fence starts from pole position. And it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Perez, Sainz, Gasly, Simona and Sebastian Vettel, Fernando Alonso, Hulk, Lance Stroll and Ocon, Ricardo, Raikkonen, Mick Schumacher and Guan Yu Zhou, Giovinazzi, Russell, Latifi and Nikita Mazepin. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So we're starting in P12, but uh, looks like a few guys took in grid penalties and everything, but now we don't have to worry about that in the next one when we go to the Austrian Grand Prix for episode number seven. Let's take a look at the race direction. It looks like we have the soft tires, and this is what everybody's going to go. So we're right alongside Fernando Alonso, but it uh, looks like everybody else is taking grid penalties. So it looks like Daniel Ricciardo took a grid penalty. You can see starting way back in uh, P15, but he should be able to move up in the field, and, and let's hope I can move up as well. And I think we're going to keep it as it is. We're going to keep it at 54.1 on the fuel. We expect to go the first nine laps on the, uh, on the soft tires, and then go with both mediums in the last 22 laps of this race. And this race will only last for about an hour and 22 minutes, so... It should not be able to take long to complete 53 laps here at the uh, French Grand Prix. And we're starting in P12, and let's see if we can have a fast car. Now that we're in the second components of our engines and everything, but the energy store and the control electronics are still intact. But uh, it hasn't reached 50% yet, but um, we'll be able to use it. Uh, this is race 6, but, um, but starting in race 11, we'll be using it for the rest of the second half of the season. So here we go, getting set for the uh, French Grand Prix at the Paul Richard circuit. Let's see if we can try to get a top 10 or a top 5 finish because the Mercedes are looking uh, dangerously great out there and they could win the race and everything, but we don't have the car to, and pace uh, to win it yet, but, um, but let's try to get into the top 10 and top 5. Let's hope we have a good restart and not making contact in any other uh, cars out there. We're starting alongside Fernando Alonso. Alpine Racing, and then Ocon starts in 13.
looks like the formation lap is uh, going pretty good. We're still waiting on that patch upgrade, so that way it can fix that view highlight, and then it won't cause any more uh, glitching problems. It'll be 104. It won't be the upgrade for the tracks yet. That, that, that won't come in until around maybe July. All right, here we go. We're in our grid formation, getting ready for the sixth round of the Formula One. World Championship and the five red lights are coming on right away here at the French Grand Prix. Lights out and we're underway in round six of the French Grand Prix. It is underway. Oh man, I, I don't know about these two. Oh man, we're gonna have to make a flashback. I, I heard Jeff, uh, there was contact over there. Carl Sainz goes into the pits, that's McLaren kind of right behind. fastest in the first sector. Well, we won't count that as a flashback because we made unavoidable contact and I think that was science. Or at least he didn't cause too much tremendous damage on my car and he did make a pit stop and, and he's starting all the way back. Man, what a good job. Uh, that was a nice start right there, but uh, still a little bit of miscue with uh, Carlos Sainz.
Well, we're pulling away from Pierre Gasly, but it looks like that's Tosanota and uh, Sainz have made pit stops. Still getting a little bit too wide going into uh, that turn. Well, we're currently running in sixth place. I think that's where we're going to be uh, all throughout this race. And we're 2.5 seconds. Uh, it looks like there's a lot of calamity going involved. Between the teammates there, Perez and Verstappen, and they're still uh, fighting each other.
We're up to six of 53 laps. The laps are winding down very quickly. We're still running in sixth place, and we're still getting the pressure on uh, Carl Leclerc. That was a nice start that we did right there, but we had one miscue, and it was Carlos Sainz. Still running under 2.5 seconds, so keeping a, a consistent pace so far. But I think pretty much we're running even, Stephen, with, with those three guys over there. But these tires are just wearing down to the bone. That you know, the soft tires doesn't come, do comfortably well over here. Yeah, you know, because they're starting to wear down on me. It's better not to make contact with her, but, um, so we dropped down into P7 because some character just has a faster Ferrari.
running in seventh place right now. But we're doing as high as everybody else out there. I think this will be on this lap. We're going to fit on the next lap there, so that way we can um, try to take the advantage on the medium. Well, they all fit. So we're going to fit on the next lap. And we're 24 seconds ahead of Shu. Uh, he must be running uh, in the back marker right now, as usual. Sixty-eight percent of that that tire, that tire is just down to the bone. You know, we definitely need to make a pit stop. Botez and all the leaders are going to pit, and uh, we're, we are going to take the mediums. Release, release. Okay, stay clear.
That was a nice pass in by both of them. We move up into P11. Sabbath sets the fastest lap with a minute 35.718. So far, we have no damage so far. We're doing a nice job here. Currently running in P8. Currently running at D6, we're having a great run, and we're pulling away from Charles Leclerc. Now that we have the uh, the pressure tires. Oh, Sebastian Ocon is out of the race. That is our first uh, retirement of the race uh, for the Alpine Formula One racing team. And that's the second DNF of the season for Ocon. Not even season at all. And Perez, we got the uh, fastest time. And I got the fastest time. Wow! So I'm quick with these medium tires. At a minute thirty five point two forty five. Yeah, that was for Sebastian Ocon's retirement.
And you see the two Mercedes. We're still uh, on pace with them right now. Lando Norris and then the two Red Bulls are still running, uh, are still fighting for position over there. And we're still pulling away from Charles Leclerc. We're about 5.4 seconds behind for that sixth place position. And we are a lot quicker going into that final turn, and we're 2.8 seconds now behind Lando Norris. We have another yellow flag. We may have another retirement. Oh no, Sergio Perez has got a problem. He's blown the engine. Oh, what a tough break for Sergio Perez. He's out of the race. Oh my goodness. Blown motor for Sergio Perez and he is done for the day. What a tough break. And that moves everybody from fourth position and beyond. And Sergio Perez has a serious problem with his car. That moves us into P5. Nando Norris doesn't have a barge board or the wing damage on his car after Sergio Perez uh, retired. There was something about severely wrong with Sergio Perez's car. And we still remain quicker in the first sector. Running in P5 right now, it looks like we're, we're tempted to get P4 away from uh, Lando Norris. It looks like he's starting to lose ground a little bit over uh, Charles, I mean, uh, Max Verstappen. And now Max Verstappen doesn't have help from his teammate, Sergio Perez, and that's his first DNF of the season. And what a, a tough break uh, for Sergio Perez. That's really going to cause a huge blow into the World Championship. Six seconds now behind Lando Norris. We're trying to keep the gap, and we're gaining on him as well too. And 
And Norris is really keeping the pressure on Max to stop him as well. Let's hope those two don't make any contact. Or otherwise, I'm going to be in podium position. I'm catching on these guys. And it looks like I got much more power than ever on this car. Stopping and still going at it for that podium position. Man, if we already uh, outpaced Charles Leclerc, he's about, we're well, about nine seconds uh, behind, ahead of him. After 23 of 53 laps, we have about uh, 31 laps remaining here in the French Grand Prix, running in the top five so far, and trying to catch up on Lando Norris and Verstappen so we can get that podium position, but uh, racing very hard out there. And man, but Verstappen is really pressuring on on Lando Norris.
1.4 seconds now behind Norris and Verstappen for the podium. everything I could, Jeff. We have good race pace and everything, but there's nothing with the arrow. Oh, now we got DRS because we're right behind Lando Norris. Man, fastest lap, minute 34.896 with DRS. We're closing in on both of these guys. See if we can try to get around them. Oh man, did it come on? I had the pace. Yeah, that's free unavoidable contact and twice with Randall Norris. to start for 
doing everything he can to try to get around Niner North. If we could try to get around, we have to get around behind them and make sure we don't make any damage because so he's just not giving me the room. is using DRS because he's still trying to uh, get around uh, back for stopping. Pulling away, 16 seconds now over uh, Carl Leclerc, and oh no, oh no!
Man, and I make a move into P4. Man, what a nice move that was. And we made it into P4 over Lando Norris. This is how it's done. Man, this is a good, terrific battle between me and Verstappen. And I've got good race pace going on through there. After 31 of 53 laps, you can only go for a podium. We're going to be pinning on the next lap and it will be our final pit stop of the day. We'll have 19 laps of fuel in this car.
Man, without even making any contact with Daniel Ricardo, but we already have two, three miscue contracts, but contacts, but no wall contacts on my own. Here's Ricardo going into the pit to make his final stop, and we're going to do the same. Come on, fast pit stop. Yes, and I beat Ricardo out. We're after 34, 53 laps, we're running in P4, having a terrific race here today. Even though we had three miscues uh, with Lando Norris and with uh, Carlos Sainz in the beginning. And I'm pulling away from Norris, and this is the battle for P4. Well, we're not far from the Mercedes, so it's still about 8.2 seconds, but we're still running on a, on a good race pace so far.
After 37 of 53 laps and up past during the first sector, closing in on Max Verstappen for that podium spot. Man, I got a minute at 33.703. That's the first time I ever cracked in that lap. And is this going to be Baku Grand Prix all over again? seconds so that's for stopping at 20 even speed but then I run a lot faster going around the second sector here leaders are only about 8.7 seconds, but the GOAT is leading. And Lewis Hamilton is automatic as usual. It looks like Max Verstappen lost a little bit. 1.1 uh, seconds now behind. We could do it again. Pulling away a little bit on Lando Norris. Daniel Ricardo is only about 20 seconds and he's currently running in sixth place. 
but we're still trying to catch Max Verstappen to try to get our third podium finish of the season. There's obviously no way we can catch the Mercedes now. Lewis Hamilton is pulling away from his teammate, uh, Valtteri Bottas. This is a, the greatest battle that I've had uh, all season long, and, and I'm battling out with Max Verstappen, and he's <laughs> still trying to hold on to that podium. But I'm running a superb fourth place. I'm having a good race so far here in the French Grand Prix. But we just don't have the pace uh, with the Mercedes yet. remaining here in the French Grand Prix. Still able to try to catch Max Verstappen. Oh, we lost it. Lost a little bit of momentum right there. Hamilton is leading, both has a second. For 
stopping through and I'm four. Next race will be race seven, will be the Austrian Grand Prix. beating going into that left front tire. It looks like we were hitting the apron too much. That's why we're losing pace. We were definitely losing pace a little bit on the Max Verstappen. happy we're pulling away from the McLarens because they're both running third and fourth right now. Ricardo's about 20 seconds and I'm uh, 3.2 seconds ahead of uh, Norris. Norris is also uh, losing pace as well. Nancy is going to go two laps down. He will let me buy two. happy with fourth place. But remember, we started in uh, P12. Uh, we passed a lot of cars out there and did a great job and only had three miscues uh, with contact and already twice on Lando Norris. And Lando Norris and then one on uh, Carlos Sainz.
after 48 to 53 laps, they're in the closing stages here at the Paul Richard Circuit in the French Grand Prix. Still running in fourth place. Mercedes is going to have their, uh, I think this is their third one through finish of the season. But we had pace, at least we uh, got P4. And then uh, this next time around, it's going to be five laps remaining here in the French Grand Prix after 49 of 53 laps. Trying to hold on to this P4 spot with 2.7 seconds behind Lando Norris. I can then switch to the left as well. Just focus on the driving. I picked up about 2.5 seconds behind for stopping it, and with the DRS, it really helped very well. You know, that gap in every race is beginning to shrink down. It's still edging and edging from forward and forward to the Mercedes AMGs.
All right, next time around, two more laps remaining to hold on to this uh, P4 position. It was a superb race, very good race here, uh, much more improved than it was in Canada. Hamilton and Botas got the fastest lap. Here's the final lap of the race. The last lap here at the uh, last and final lap here at the French Crown Prix, and we're going to hold on to the we're going to hold on to this P4 position. Last time around here at the La Casket Circuit here at Paul Richard. We have done an excellent job. It was an excellent race here in the Paul Richard, but just fell short of a podium finish. But uh, we're going to hit another strong fourth place finish in the French Grand Prix. We have two podiums and a win. But this will hold out pretty well. We had a great race. Awesome job by the team table performance team and then even holding off the McLaren's. It wasn't a McLaren's day today, it was a, a pure powerhouse Mercedes AMGs that, that got the job done. And the gold Lewis Hamilton is going to win another French Grand Prix. And we managed to hold on to P4. Man, those tires were ripping out there. And we end up with the uh, fourth place finish uh, at the Lacasket Paul Richard circuit. And Daniel Ricardo becomes the driver of the day. After that grid penalty he took uh, for P15 and he moves up in the top five.
So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. After an incredible performance, Lewis Hamilton secures the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Now, let's discuss that. Who would you say is a contender for Driver of the Day? Well, Crofty, Daniel Ricciardo would have to be my Driver of the Day. It's less about what he did right, but how little he did wrong. Perfect driving. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. I can't wait to see what's next. Man, I don't even know how to stop. He got the uh, full power to get him a minute 32.843. He did an excellent job. But, well, it was a great P4 finish over here at the French Grand Prix. We just didn't have the pace uh, with the Mercedes, but we're almost edging closer. You know, we used to be about 20 seconds behind, but now that the car is getting a lot more... Uh, quicker than expected and now we're 14 seconds behind so we're edging closer and closer to the Mercedes and uh, we got a very fast uh, Formula One car and as long as we keep on the uh, R&D developments uh, throughout the season we're going to keep on uh, getting closer and closer and then we'll be under the teeth of the Mercedes but it was a nice poor place finish and everything we did an excellent job but uh, it wasn't meant to be, but I know it's hard to win two wins in a row. But, and Lewis Hamilton gets his third win of the season and secures another 25 points of, of, for scoring. And then Botez second for stopping third. And then I get fourth place. Lando Norris and uh, Daniel Ricciardo go fifth and sixth. And then Charles Leclerc uh, seventh, Vettel eighth. And man, something went wrong with uh, Leclerc's car. He was running in fourth place, but then he couldn't have uh, a pace with the McLarens. And a battle in eighth place position, a nice uh, points effort and five points uh, for the uh, Aston Martin Racing. And then Fernando Alonso uh, goes up to nine. Well, Shu uh, improved, but he <laughs> started in 18th and then finishes 18th. And then Sergio Perez and Ocon had DNFs with uh, motor problems. So we did an excellent job up there. Let's take a look at the standings. Uh, we're still fourth place. Well, we just shrunk a little bit of edge, but we were 21 behind, but now we're 25 uh, behind with that fourth place finish. And that was pretty good just to, to secure our, our position. And we have a tie for, uh, and we got a tie now, but Lewis Hamilton has uh, three wins under his belt. Max Verstappen has one win in the uh, Spanish Grand Prix, and now they're tied for, with 98 points, but Lewis Hamilton uh, breaks the tie, uh, goes with the tiebreaker with, uh, with that win here in the French Grand Prix, and then Botez third, and then on fourth place in the standings, 73 points to put in the bag, and then Lando Norris rounds up the top five. Then the constructor standings were still four. But McLaren, Red Bull, and everybody else have uh, commanding leads. But we'll be able to do well and uh, see how the next race in Austria will, will prevail uh, very well. So that was an exciting race from our perspective. What about yours? How do you feel these grid penalties are affecting the sport? Well, it didn't really affect no one or anything, but I uh, started in P12 and everything. We had a good start uh, from behind, but then we moved up. And then I don't know what happened with Carlos Sainz uh, making contact with me because uh, Sainz and then also uh, Lando Norris uh, wasn't, uh, was having an aggressive day. But the, well, we're smashing everyone's expectations. It's a team sport. It's a hard racing. And... Uh, and we performed out very well today here in the uh, French Grand Prix. Even though we didn't have the, uh, the front pace uh, with the Mercedes and Red Bull, but we're edging closer and closer to them. You know, so the seconds are ticking down, and we used to be 20 seconds in uh, Spain, but now we're 14 seconds, so we're getting a much quicker with the Mercedes uh, throughout the season, but uh, we'll be able to reel them in. Uh, by the time we get these um, R&D setups uh, going, and. Um, and this car will be too, certainly on top notch. Great racing here at the French Grand Prix, fourth place. It wasn't bad that I finished position, penalty free, and then the fastest lap. And now I leave Fernando Alonso by about 10 points on the rival B right down.
Man, look at this. I'm only just about one acclaim away from uh, getting my third sponsorship. And there was a lot of damage on Shoe's car, but uh, no damage uh, for myself. Cash is getting pretty low. We may need to shut down facilities for a while to cut down our running costs. Well, so we get 1223. We got the crankshaft and the durability uh, upgrade, but um, I think we're going to do a. Um, let's see. We need to do a, a durability team building upgrade because um, in the next one we're going to get that crankshaft uh, upgrade and we're currently running low on cash and everything but we're going to have to wait on the uh, specs and see if we can move on to the next one. See what we can do for R and D developments. Still can't get nothing yet on the aerodynamics until the suspension arm is upgraded. Cover distribution. All right, so we're going to get the durability upgrade. So now we have upgraded our uh, durability. We have all a major in the issue all failed. Earlier this week, so the entire development package for this weekend has failed. Any redevelopments will need to be ordered from the R&D screen. So we had a failed upgrade on the uh, development, but uh, now we can get that crankshaft uh, on a repeat. So it will be upgraded for the next one when we go to, um, in the next one, race uh, right after Austria. And then we can go to um, the British Grand Prix. So the British Grand Prix will have that upgrade.
have 973, so we're, we're going to have some huge upgrades in the next race uh, when we go to um, uh, the British Grand Prix because um, our department cas the capacity is all reached and everything. And we do get that second uh, durability, so now we have build time and then we have quality control. So we'll be able to save some cash uh, for the next one. and. Uh, and then right after that, I think the next one we'll do the, the chassis build time. Uh, we'll get that done and everything, and then uh, everything will be under control. And so so glad we got that second uh, spec uh, durability. That, that that's going to help us a, a lot. And let's hope it will do good in the next one. And uh, and take a look at this. Yeah. And we are one more away of taking over that uh, third sponsor that will be on the car, and that will help us give us a, a lot more cash uh, than expected. We have 18 days left until uh, our Equinox um, the sponsor will be uh, expired. And then we'll be able to get that uh, number 10 acclaim sponsor, and then we can add another sponsor on there. So, and then that's going to give us a, a lot more uh, cash effort. And let's hope that happens up in the next race. So that will do it. That will wrap it up for uh, the um, French Grand Prix. And we did a great job out there. We had the, we had the car to do it, and it uh, pulled forward, and uh, we did excellent. And thank you so much for watching here on the Speed Chamber Number 3 channel. It was a fourth place finish. Uh, here at the uh, La Casca Circuit in Paul Richard, and yeah, it was a great effort, and we did exciting. We had three miscues, um, a couple of contacts with uh, Norris, and then one contact at the start of the race with uh, Sign. But uh, we had to get fourth place and everything, but I hope we will have some huge upgrades in the next race because we can't uh, get the Department of Capacity reach uh, on any of the other upgrades uh, that we could do for the R&D. And then we had a failed upgrade on the uh, on the crankshaft, but we'll be able to get that uh, in the car, and then uh, then it'll be ready for the next one. But thank you so much for watching, and let's see what happens in the next race when we go to uh, the Austrian Grand Prix. It's going to be an easy track, and hopefully the car will still be fast. And uh, let's see if we can hope we can get a second win. But have a good night, everyone, and uh, hope we get plenty of rest and uh, enjoy your sleep. And uh, we'll see you then. So long, everyone.